Today, I'm going on a first run in the Adidas Adizero Adios 4. Nine point seven seven miles, seven minutes forty seven seconds per mile today. Having a great first run in the Adidas Adizero Adios Four, a fantastic marathon racing shoe. But before I get into my thoughts, I want to go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that was sent to me by Roadrunner Sports, so thank you to them for sending me this pair for review. But neither Roadrunner Sports nor Adidas is paying me to make this video, uh, and neither Roadrunner Sports nor Adidas will have any editorial control or input as to what goes into the video. They're not gonna be able to see it until you guys are able to see it. Now, this is a 10 millimeter heel drop, $140 marathon racing shoe by Adidas. And it's a shoe that I've overlooked for a very long time. And in a nutshell, the only thing I don't like about the shoe is that I haven't run in it sooner. It has just the right amount of boost in it. Now, last year I ran in the Adidas Ultra Boost, uh, the Parley edition, and I really enjoyed that shoe. I ran in it for in a variety of distances all the way up to the half marathon distance. And I found that the first handful of miles in Ultra Boost are great. I loved having that great boosty sensation, but after a while it starts to get really muddled and you feel like you're sinking in a little too much with each step. And then the shoe starts to feel a little bit heavy and weighs you down. This shoe doesn't suffer from any of those problems. Now let's break down a little bit of what we got going on here. And I think my overall take on this shoe uh, in terms of the materials used and the aesthetic is that this really could be like a performance retro. Like everything that's going on on the top from the seven sets of eyelets with the option for an eighth to the dual layer mesh that's on top. Everything just seems like it's a little bit of a dated upper. There's even felt that's going along the side here at an angle coming down and reaching the mid side, uh, the medial side of the foot. But then you get to the midsole and that's where you've got the real surprise, which is the boost that we all know and love, but it's got it in a much more restrained amount than they would in the Ultra Boost. Now the Ultra Boost is ultra, so it's everything about it is over the top. Uh, there's more boost than ever in the Ultra Boost 19s. This is going in the opposite direction where it's got just the right amount. Uh, on the medial side of the ankle, there's also this plastic piece that's down here. And I was worried that this would cause some pain because anytime a shoe has extra support or stability on this part of the shoe, all it does is it sends extra impact directly up my shin and into the knee. I didn't get any of that here in my about 10 miles for today. On the outsole, you've got continental rubber, which was nice and grippy. I'm a big fan of the continental rubber. And the other thing about this shoe that I found was interesting was this white part that goes along here. Now, I'm not sure exactly what it's made out of, but it's a very hard material. And as I was running, it felt like it was giving me a little bit of like a shank like response because I felt like it was providing extra rigidity. And then as I was hitting the ground and then pushing off, it was giving me some pushback uh, as I was running. So an interesting feeling from this. I haven't been able to find any information. Uh, I just did a preliminary search for it, but I didn't find any information uh, as to what this material actually is and what its intended purpose is. I'm not sure if maybe it's just guide rails type system where it's kind of making sure your foot doesn't slide around too much. Also helping you from sliding around too much is there's a little bit of a material over here along the edge of the toe box uh, to help keep your foot in. Uh, that's not just the uh, dual layer mesh that you see on the toes. The dual layer mesh is nice and flexible and stretchy. So if you're wiggling your toes, you'll see them move around. But over here, there's something that's providing a little bit of extra support in there. I was worried that this would cause some toe rubbing because uh, it is a pretty snug 
fitting shoe. Uh, but this was fine. And I would recommend going true to size in this. Adidas tells you on all of its running shoes to go up half a size because its running shoes are intended to fit snug, but running shoes are intended to fit a bit snug because uh, you're running in them. And so I stayed true to size with this one and I thought it felt right. If anything, I felt like the shoe was a little bit long and uh, which was a surprise because everything else about this shoe is like minimalist. So even putting it on, wearing it around all day today before I run commuted home, it was super comfortable to just walk around. And I thought having less boost would make it an uncomfortable kind of casual shoe. I thought it was fine. Uh, and everything that's going on here, although the, this does have a, a somewhat stiff heel cup area, I, it didn't bother me. I almost didn't even feel it. And everything about it felt like it was slammed low. And so where it was touching my heel, where it was touching my ankle, everything was just lower and more, more minimal than I've been used to feeling in a lot of my other shoes. I just really enjoyed the fit of the shoe. What's funny about this though, is as I was collecting my thoughts, is I remembered a, uh, a video from a hype beast that I had watched that reviewed a collab version uh, of this shoe or two collab versions of this exact shoe. And the guy just complained that he couldn't even sit in the shoes, walking around him was terrible. He put him on his feet and instantly took him off because he hated it so much. But I just think this feels great. Without using knit materials to give you a sock-like fit, I feel like this is delivering on a sock-like fit in, in a good way that runners will appreciate. Now, the ride is gonna be a little bit stiffer than an ultra boost for sure, because there's just that much less boost in the midsole. Even though it's a 10 millimeter heel drop shoe, it reminded me a lot of the Zante Pursuits that I've been running in because that also is a less cushioned shoe and it has a six millimeter heel drop. Now, I didn't remember what the heel drop was in this shoe before I ran in it today. And if I were to guess, I would have guessed somewhere in the six to eight millimeter category. Uh, but it turns out it's a 10, uh, which is a number that I normally run in. But the reason why I thought it was a lower heel drop is because when I wasn't being careful about how, how I was running, I definitely felt a little of the extra impact in the heel area, which is something that I feel in the Zante Pursuit. And is also something I tend to feel in any lower heel drop shoe that I run in when I'm getting a little bit sloppy. And so the ultimate takeaway for, I think for this shoe in terms of my first impressions is that this is a really great shoe for those longer tempo runs, marathon racing, certainly you can do it. I don't know if I could do it, but that's more a, a commentary on my feet not being all that strong. But I think a lot of people could run marathons in the shoe, half marathon and under for sure. It's super lightweight. It works with you. You don't even notice it's on your feet. But the thing it does make you do is have to think about your running a lot. Now to compare it to uh, very briefly to the Vaporfly, with the Vaporfly, one of the, of the many things that I like about that shoe is that once you get to a pace, you can pretty much just lock in and go on cruise control and just run. This, I, I tried to get to a couple of miles at my goal for 2019 marathon paces, and I was able to get there, but I was constantly like tinkering. There was a lot of input that had to go into it. It wasn't exactly cruise control. It was constantly like checking in on like, how was my foot hitting the ground? Are my pick, am I picking up my knees enough? What level of effort am I putting in? So I was just constantly felt like I was tweaking. Now that again may be a reflection of me and where I am in my kind of training and fitness level in March uh, of the year, uh, not anywhere near marathon season for me. And so that could be more of what's going on. So I'll need more miles to really figure out uh, and tease out where that feeling is coming from. But overall, I'm really looking forward to putting in a lot of very fast miles in this shoe and uh, I will definitely be comparing it to the Vaporfly and a couple of other of the marathon racing shoes that are out there. Uh, this is quite the sleeper shoe. I mean, it just looks like a regular running shoe, but um, there's a fantastic marathon shoe inside it. It's just uh, a nice surprise. Uh, before I go for today, I want to talk about the new charity runner that we have for this week. It's Allison Rose. She's going to be running the Boston Marathon coming up very, very soon now. And she's going to be raising money for Team Eye and Ear, which is a charity. Massachusetts Eye and Ear is a charity that uh, aims to cure diseases of blindness and deafness. 
And uh, I'll keep it short today because this video is already getting long, but as someone who personally has had to see a lot of ear and eye specialists over the course of my lifetime, uh, it's definitely a charity that I can get behind and I was happy to donate $70. I'll post links in the description in case you wanna learn more and we'll be talking about her all week. So we'll definitely get a chance to learn more about Allison and the charity that she's running for. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Yo, what's going on?